Forty miles isn't so bad, I said. Las Cruces. The name seemed strangely familiar to me, but I couldn't decide why. Carter, why there? I just... He looked so uncomfortable, I knew it must have something to do with Zia. I had a vision. A vision of a loveliness, I ventured. He looked like he was trying to swallow a golf ball, which really confirmed my suspicions. I just think we should go there, he said. We might find something important. Too risky, Amos said. I can't allow it with the house of life on your trail. We should stay in the wilderness, away from cities. Then suddenly, click. My brain had one of those amazing moments when it actually works correctly. No, Carter's right, I said. We have to go there. It was my brother's turn to look surprised. I am? We do? Yes. I took the plunge and told him about my talk with Geb. Amos brushed some sand off of his jacket. That's interesting, Sadie, but I don't see how Las Cruces comes into play. Because it's Spanish, isn't it? I said. Las Cruces? The crosses? Just as Geb told me. Amos hesitated, then nodded reluctantly. Get in the boat. A bit short on water for a boat ride, aren't we? I asked. But I followed him on board. Amos took off his coat and uttered a magic word. Instantly, the boat came to life, drifted to the stern, and grabbed the tiller. Amos smiled at me, and some of that old twinkle came back into his eyes. Who needs water? The boat shuddered and lifted off into the sky. If Amos ever got tired of being a magician, he could have gotten a job as a skyboat tour operator. The vista coming over the mountains was quite stunning. At first, the desert had seemed barren and ugly to me compared to the lush greens of England, but I was starting to appreciate that the desert had its own stark beauty, especially at night. The mountains rose like dark islands in a sea of lights. I'd never seen so many stars above us, and the dry wind smelled of sage and pine. Las Cruces spread out in a valley below, a glowing patchwork of streets and neighborhoods. As we got closer, I saw that most of the town was nothing very m remarkable. It might have been Manchester or Swindon or any place, really. But Amos aimed our ship towards the south of the city, to an area that was obviously much older, with adobe buildings and tree-lined streets. As we descended, I began to get nervous. "'Won't they notice us in a flying boat?' I asked. I mean, I know magic is hard to see, but... This is New Mexico, Amos said. They see UFOs here all the time. And with that, we landed on top of the roof of a small church. It was like dropping back in time, or into a Wild West film. The old town square was lined with stucco buildings like an Indian pueblo. The streets were brightly lit and crowded. It looked like a festival, with stall vendors selling strings of red peppers, Indian blankets, and other curios. An old stagecoach was parked next to a clump of cacti. In the plaza's bandstand, men with huge guitars and loud voices played mariachi music. This is the historic area, Amos said. I believe they call it Mesilia. They have a lot of Egyptian stuff here, do they? I asked dubiously. Oh, the ancient cultures of Mexico have a lot in common with Egypt, Amos said. Then he retrieved his coat from the stern of the rudder. But that's a talk for another day. Thank God, I muttered. Then I sniffed the air and smelled something strange, but wonderful. Like baking bread and melting butter, only spicier, yummier. I am starving. It didn't take long walking the plaza to discover handmade tortillas. God, they were good. I suppose London has Mexican restaurants. <clears throat> we have everything else, but I'd never been to one, and I doubt that the tortillas would have been this heavenly. A large woman in a white dress rolled out balls of dough in her flour-caked hands, flattened and baked the tortillas in a hot skillet, and handed us to them on paper napkins. They didn't need butter or jam or anything. They were so delicate they just melted in my mouth. I made Amos pay for about a dozen, just for me. Carter was enjoying himself, too, until he tried the red chili tamales at another booth. I thought his face would explode. Hot, he announced. Drink! Drink!